What's up guys, it's Alexander Travelbomb, and today we're going to go over a question that I am asked constantly, probably more so than any other question, and that's, how the hell do I afford to travel so much? If you want to learn anything about traveling and making videos, or a combination of both, subscribe down below and click the bell so that you don't miss anything. Now let's get into it. So people have been asking me a lot lately because I've spent a lot of time in Europe, a lot of time in Southeast Asia, and lately I've been on a road trip around the United States. And people always want to know, how do I afford to do this? Well, it's a combination of a ton of things, and we're going to go over that right now. So first of all, these days, I'm making money on YouTube. The income from YouTube has taken a while to get up there, but it's really starting to take off a bit and starting to help with my travels a bit more. I didn't start until about a year ago, and it's really taken until up until this point to really get anywhere with it as far as uh, earning money uh, to travel. But that is the first way, so it's AdSense from YouTube videos. It's basically the ads that play before, during, and sometimes after the videos. YouTube gives you a cut of the revenue that they make off of those ads that play over your videos. Um, so the creator gets a cut and YouTube gets a cut. And the next thing kind of similar to that is affiliate links. So. For me, mostly, it's the Amazon affiliate program, so if you go down in the description below, you'll see a bunch of links from Amazon, and when somebody who views my YouTube video goes to my links to see my camera or see some of my travel gear, and they go to Amazon and buy something, I get a very small commission off of that, at no cost to the viewer or the person who clicked the links. The best part about that is the viewer or the person who clicked the links, they can buy anything off Amazon. Anything that's completely unrelated to your video and to the link that they first clicked. Amazon just wants to give you back a little bit for sending them to Amazon to buy anything. It hasn't been a huge thing for me. I actually haven't checked it for several months, but it was consistently getting me around uh, 20 to $50 for the last few months. Okay, so the next thing is kind of a new thing, uh, it's Patreon. Patreon is basically a website where your viewers can go to give a little back to you for creating free content. Uh, so for someone on YouTube like me, people go to Patreon and they and you can give a dollar or five dollars or something like that per month and in exchange the creator gives something back to the viewer. Uh, in my case it's postcards and since I'm an artist paintings drawings that kind of thing but it can really be anything so patreon's just a nice little extra monthly income that you can get on top of those other ways so the next thing is basically saving money is like making money I travel on a very strict budget and I don't spend that much money while I travel people think that I'm just on this luxurious vacation all the time but it's not like that I I like to do everything as cheap as I can so that I can travel longer. Uh, for me, it's not the expensive vacations that I really like, uh, doing all the activities, staying in a luxury resort and those types of things. I like to more so live the lifestyle of travel and travel slow and cheaply and meet people along the way. By traveling on a budget, I'm able to stretch my dollar a lot further when a lot of people spend several thousand dollars in a week or two vacation I spend the same amount over five or six months and one of the ways I do this is by using free services like couchsurfing couchsurfing has been amazing it's one of the best things that you can join it's basically you stay with people for free you stay on their couch and in exchange it's kind of a cultural exchange where you become friends with the person, you share your culture, they share their culture, and they give you a place to stay because they want to meet someone new, someone from a different place, they want to make a new friend, and it's just a nice thing to do. Sometimes travelers will do it to give back because a traveler will stay on somebody else's couch and then when they get back home they will in turn host other people and give a little bit back to the couch surfing community. I've had amazing experiences with this. I've been doing it for a few years now. I did it all over Europe and had just great experiences. 
and it saved me a ton of money. That's not the main reason I do it for the money. I do it because I like meeting the people, but if you're traveling on a budget, it is definitely a great thing to save you a ton so you don't have to buy, so you don't have to stay at hostels and hotels and pay for those every single night. And along those lines of couch surfing is Trusted House Sitters. This is basically a website where you house sit for somebody. Usually it's to take care of their pets or something like that uh, while they're traveling. And this one's just great. If something like couch surfing isn't your thing because you don't want to stay with other people, if you would like to have your own place still, as if you were in a hotel, Trusted House Sitters is great because you get the place to yourself. Now this one does cost a little bit to join. I believe it's, it's around $100 to join, but if you use my link, then you'll get 20% off. The link is below. Okay, and the next thing is just to do your research. Do your research on f the places that you're going, the countries, how they work uh, on flights. If you do your research on flights ahead of time, you can definitely save a lot of money. If you book hotels and hostels ahead of time, you can also save money. Uh, I like to travel in the off season or the shoulder season because everything is cheaper. Flights, hotels, everything. So if you can swing it, don't travel during the summer months, travel during winter or fall. And don't travel around the holidays because that's when it spikes up again. The main thing that I've done for the last couple years before I was doing YouTube is I would get a job where I can make my own hours. So this has been easy in a place like San Francisco where there's constantly new startups, new businesses starting all the time and you can easily join them because they need people. It's the, the companies like, like Uber, DoorDash, Instacart, those types of companies. If you join them, which is usually pretty easy to apply, you just work 10 hour, 11, 12 hour days and just work constantly for a few months. If you work a ton for a few months, you'll be able to save enough money or that if you travel in a cheaper country and your dollar is going really far already, you're going to be able to stay there longer. So basically I'll work very hard for two to three months and then from those savings I'll be able to travel in a cheap country for five or six months, sometimes even longer. So that's really it. Between doing my research and getting cheap flights, making a little bit of money on the road through YouTube and different things along those lines, by traveling on a budget and staying places for free, I've been able to travel cheaply all over the world. Is there anything that I didn't mention that you've done to travel cheaper? Leave a comment below and let me know. All of the links that I've mentioned are below. Click those to see anything and also to see my gear. So I'm Alexander Travelbum. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the like button, it really helps me out. And I will see you in the next video.